So this is how it looked before. Shoes everywhere, corners completely empty, but with some $40 magic. Boom, look at that guys, absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna show you how to do this using about $40 worth of material and keeping it simple. Hey guys, don't be sure making more videos again. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a beautiful LED corner shoe rack using a free table for cheap. And make sure you stick around for the end of the video because as a bonus, I'm gonna be giving three tips on how to improve it and make it even better. So without further ado, please click the like button for the YouTube algorithm and let's get to it. Okay, the secret is actually using a free table I found from Facebook Marketplace. As you can see right here, I have examples that I just randomly picked. There's always someone trying to give away a free table. And in my situation, they actually paid me $20 to take the table out of their hands. So first step is we're gonna flip the table over because we're going to actually be cutting this table into four sections. Now you can use whatever method you want in terms of actually getting this into four perfect pizza slices here. However, I use a straight edge to get perfectly straight lines and I used a pencil to make sure that I can actually see these lines when I'm doing the cut. Now the tool I used was actually this jigsaw. I'll leave the link in the description below. It's super easy to use, super simple and really cheap. And in no time you have two pieces and now we're gonna do another cut to get the two other pieces that we need for the actual shelf. And you can see it's, it's really simple and the jigsaw works wonders. And if the jigsaw doesn't work, you can always resort to doing a karate chop. Now that we have the four pieces, we're gonna actually bust out the chop saw, miter saw, whatever you wanna call it. And if you don't have one of these laying around, you can definitely use jigsaw for all of these cuts. However, since I had this laying around, it does make it a lot easier. So the first step is I'm gonna do a 45 degree cut right there to let wires pass through. And you can see I'm doing a hole for the top one because I wanted to look a little bit more professional and insert these plastic covers. I'll leave the link in the description section of the video below to give it a more professional look. Once you're done with that, you're gonna wanna sand everything down. And I'm using a sanding block right here. And then we're gonna go back to the chop saw and use some one by two pieces of wood. You can use whatever piece of wood you want. And this will be the support for each and every shelf, as you can see right here. Like I said, you can do this using jigsaw. You do not have to have an expensive chop saw or anything like that, and you will get the job done in no time. Now, once you're done with all your cuts, you're ready for assembly time. Now, for the first shelf, I'm actually using the baseboard right there as a support, not the one by twos that I cut, because there's a baseboard already. Might as well use it, and I use the Ryobi nail gun to nail everything in. I'm telling you right now, the Ryobi nail gun is a absolute must have when it comes to making this build. You can use screws and stuff like that, but it just makes it a lot easier, a lot faster and less headache. Next, we're gonna do the first support. Make sure you use a level to level everything out. And once again, with the same tool, the Ryobi nail gun cuts your time in half. Just like that, you're done with your first support. Do the exact same thing for the next support. Now this part is looking solid. I'm so excited because the next step is I'm going to be installing the second shelf. And look at that, works absolutely perfectly. And now to use that Ryobi gun again to start nailing everything down. Everything's looking good so far. Rinse and repeat the same thing. And this is the last support right here. Make sure it's level and look at that. At this point, you are halfway there and it just gets better and better after this. The next step is starting to beautify this entire project. First things first to actually beautify in this project is using this plastic wood filler. It's from DAP, it's really cheap and it's like magic. You just basically open it up, put it on with your finger, rub it off and it literally fills all of the holes, the pinholes and everything like that. This is a crucial step guys because when you paint over this, you don't want these holes showing up everywhere and the plastic wood filler will fill everything up even on the top section. Make sure you don't forget that because as you can see right here, there's a lot of holes and you want it to look like this after you're done. Next up, I use some Dynaflex 230. This is my go-to caulking right here. You can use something cheaper, you can use something more expensive, but lay that bead down on the corners, get your finger in there, smooth it out, take your time right here. I had to do it multiple times because I wanted it smooth and no rough edges or anything like that. And you can see right here, I did every single layer and I'll show you how it's supposed to look in the end. Look at that clean cut, beautiful line. We're gonna do some movie magic here. Put some blue tape because it's time to paint. 
In my case, I went with the bare marquee high gloss and I paint matched it to the walls because I want it to look seamless. You don't want to cheap out on paint right here, guys, because this is going to be used with your shoes and you want it to last a long time. So here we go. We're going to pour it in and go to town. Now, in my situation, I actually ended up doing two coats. However, you can do multiple coats depending on how much you want to spend and how thick you want this paint. After painting everything, while the paint is still wet, I took off all of the blue tape and it's looking pretty awesome, guys. And at this point, you could call it done. However, you guys know me. I am the LED guy. I want to amplify this to the next level. Time for some LEDs. I ended up using these 2835 LEDs. You get a ton of them for really low cost. And as you can see right here, I'm measuring it out, cutting it using the scissors and stripping the wires. You don't have to use fancy wire strippers like I have. You can just use a knife if you want to. Expose that bare metal. Use a soldering iron to put solder on the actual wire itself and then solder it to the LED strip. As you can see right there, positive is red negative is black it's really that simple and in no time you're gonna have as many strips as you like now obviously this will depend on what kind of design you're trying to make and also where you're gonna place it and as a pro tip i will advise using this dc jack right here to screw the red wire in and the black wire into it like so to make it simple when you plug in your power supply the power supply is plugged into the wall and Oh my goodness, look at that. That is for one layer, and now I have one, two, and three more sets to do. Installing these LEDs is literally peel and stick. Peel the paper backing off and then stick it on. And I've used this method for many projects I've done around the house, and trust me, they stay on and they last forever. The next step to hide the wires, I use my secret handy dandy glue gun. As you can see right there, you put some glue down and you stick the wire on there like so. By far, this is the cheapest method for indoor and outdoor use in terms of hiding wires. I've used this to hire camera wires outside. I've used this for wires inside and look how clean it looks. The next step to make it even cleaner is actually using some of that caulking. Caulk it all the way down, smooth the caulking out all the way to the top and getting your paintbrush in there. And once this paint dries, it will color match everything you would look like you drill holes in the wall to install these leds i don't want to reveal anything yet however now it's time for the fun part i have this led that i purchased from amazon a google home hub a painting that i installed up on one side a mirror that i installed on the other side and you gotta have some kind of green plant. My girlfriend found this at Home Goods, and it looks absolutely beautiful and so far so good. Now what you guys are probably asking is how did we wire everything up? And you can see it's extremely simple. We use a six outlet power strip. I plugged in the Google Home right there. And to make everything smart, I actually used these smart plugs I got from Amazon. They work really well. Trust me, I've tried a lot of smart plugs. This one works with Apple and Google, and it's as simple as just plugging it in, plugging your device in, setting it up in your app, and it's done. By far the best method to make anything smart. We're gonna put the finishing touches on. Look at that, professional. And this is how it looks. Of course, we're gonna place the shoes on because that's what this was all made for. Man, look at that. Much better than having shoes all in this corner and also just elevates this entire corner by zero to 100. Oh my God, look at this guy. This is absolutely beautiful. I am loving everything about it. Way better than I expected. This thing is solid, guys. This is not going anywhere. Even the subtlety of this LED right here, and you can change the colors and everything with this remote right here. Absolutely beautiful. And everything is just smart because of the two smart plugs that I actually ended up using. I'll leave both of those links in the description as well. Turn off shoe rack. Turn on shoe rack. Just makes the entire thing smart by just adding two plugs. 
Okay, so now it's time for that bonus section of the video on three things to actually make this a better build for you. And the first thing, the super important thing is actually covering these LEDs. Now I didn't use any cover on them. However, I might in the future because I don't want, you know, whenever you're putting shoes in here and stuff, I don't want someone hitting that or anything like that. This is a build that I want to last for a long time. I want to install some kind of clear protection that I can put on all of these LEDs. And I think I found something, I'll leave the link in the description below as well that will help in terms of keeping these LEDs last a long time underneath here. Now number two, now this is depending completely on you. However, for me, I would actually have got a bigger table. There was an opportunity to get a free bigger table that could actually go all the way to right here so that, you know, I didn't have to have the shoe all the way on the edge. However, I passed it up thinking that this pathway was gonna be completely blocked and that is number two. I would definitely get a bigger table. And number three, this is actually super important in terms of longevity as well, is letting the paint cure for at least two to three weeks. If you can do four weeks, if you can wait a month, that's even better. Because this thing gets used all the time. You, know, you don't want to have paint underneath your shoes. And you don't want to have paint chipping off your actual table right here. So make sure you keep those three bonus tips in mind. If you're better at woodworking, if you're better with LEDs, let me know in the comment section below. I would love to discuss with you guys and see how we can make it better and also just improve the look and quality of this design. All the links to all the products are gonna be in the description section below. You guys already know that. If you like this content and wanna see more, make sure you subscribe. There's a lot more of this and a lot more coming in the future. My goal is to once again hit 100,000 subscribers. We're almost at 80,000 subscribers right now. I know we can make it happen. But other than that, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Clean to see you saying thanks for watching and 